This is happiness to be everything at once. Be unblinded, be unlearned, be unbridled and unburned. Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of Mood Prep. My name is Dave Nixon, um, and today. I think it's a little bit real. I actually, um, <clears throat> excuse me, I spoke about this with uh, with those in um, the coaches circle, which will soon change to Mood Prep U, um, just last Friday. And it's one of the challenges that I've had for this month. Um, and uh, I probably, it really does probably so, sort of stem from having the puppy. I sound like a big sook, but um, no judgment. But it's more so... Uh, Something that I worked really hard on last year was really building a schedule and having a routine and something that I stuck to. And, and in doing so, it really allowed me to, um, well, for lack of a better term, step into my potential and, and start really developing. And it's really interesting now with things that I've learned and the things that I teach around either um, order and chaos or subjective and objective, um, something such as performance and meaning. It's looking at two sort of ends of a spectrum and knowing where, and this is, I suppose, a self-awareness thing for all of us, where we sit mostly in those, out of those two, you know, let's, let's look at um, subjective or objective at the moment as the, as a brief example, gives us a really good indication just about how often or how, like we can only take, so let's, let's look at me, I'll, I'll clear it up subjectively I, I spend so much time in the subjective space that's saying that you know with thoughts articulating things um really all this basically subjectiveness is all the things you can't point at feelings emotions um the subjective reality of the world around us all that sort of stuff right and i, I love that I, I love poetry um I, I can appreciate art but I, I you know when i was younger i couldn't and so one of the things i personally have found challenging and difficult is more objectivity and objectivity meaning um, structures and systems, um, you know, being timely, having a schedule, um, following a plan, like all of this sort of stuff was stuff that I was, you know, almost a renegade or a rebel against. And so one of the things that I lent into last year was really building a schedule and making sure that I really tried, not even tried, I really committed to being more objective with how I saw things and did things. And this month, since having my little friend, Petey, if you haven't seen Petey yet, you should definitely jump on my Instagram, at DDNix, and see him, my little mini schnauzer, um, has completely thrown that out, right? Completely thrown that out, and, and it's gone back to being way more chaos and way less order. And accepting that and then finding new ways is, is where I'm at with that, which is fine. But it's so fascinating just how much, you know, looking back on my life when I used to have significantly less order, and this is where it also, looking at the Enneagram, I step into what's known as, you know, my type sevenness, the enthusiast, which can be scattered, um, which can be, you know, um, hectic and always looking for the next thing and always sort of sacrificing now for maybe a better future, but never getting there anyway. And so this last month, and I mean, this podcast is an example of it because I didn't have my charger this is pretty funny. This is how human I am. Um, I didn't have my charger at home, so I came to the gym right, to do the podcast um, when there was no charger at the gym because the charger was actually at home. It's um, <laughs> it's just like this whole range of things, like I'm doing more work at home now than I did before, and it's just like starting to see, and if I'm not mindful, I'm starting to see that this this increased level of chaos. Now, chaos, by the way, a healthy level of chaos just means a healthy level of, um, you know, beauty, art, um, once again, subjectiveness, looking at meaning, you know, all these sorts of things. It's not about everything being chaotic. Like it's when chaos and order are married, when they're integrated, when they're healthy, it brings about a healthy individual. It brings about the left and right hemispheres of the brain, right? And it's an integration of that. It's an integration of all the three intelligence centers, which is the brain, the heart, and the gut. But it's knowing that for me, my default is heavily in the subjectiveness, right? Or heavily in the right hemisphere, which is a lot more of the creative side, then yeah, 
what ends up happening is that if I'm not mindful, if I'm not careful, I'll slip back into the chaos of the chaos rather than the order of the chaos. And it's really interesting seeing that and seeing the the fallout of that. Now, what's really interesting, and I think I kind of talked about this previously on a different podcast, but what's really interesting is that people that are high in order actually would benefit from just booking a holiday and not planning it too much, right? Actually actually would benefit from this this subjectivity, this this chaos if you like, the the meaning side of things. And um the the beauty in all of this is because our potential doesn't necessarily lay in, in getting better at what we're already good at. Our potential lays in, in broadening our awareness and building strengths in, in our weaknesses. It doesn't mean not to build strengths in our strengths. That will continue to happen, especially if it's a if it's a default, you know, base for you. You'll just naturally keep doing that. But really paying attention to like, you know, is there too much order? Is there too much structure in my life that it's not actually order anymore? It's tyranny. Like, am I am I do I do I am I over being the boss of myself? Because some people are fucking horrible bosses and shit employees, but there's only one, and that's themselves. Because they're a terrible boss to themselves, they make them do all this work, and there's you know they they get to the end of it, they're like, what's it? What's what's even the point? Right? That's they're asking for meaning. They haven't stopped. They've been so busy performing that they never stopped to think about: Is there any meaning behind me, me donating parts of my life to this cause? Right? Do you hear that? Donating parts of my life to this cause. And the flip side of that, on the subjective side, is simply going and looking at: Well, is there any value in me just continually, you know, let's call it dreaming about all this stuff, but never doing it? And so. This this search for development requires a deep, brutal level of honesty with yourself around what's really pissing you off and what's really keeping you back. Um, and the key thing here is that it's never outside of you, right? There may be there may be hurdles, challenges, difficulties. There may be all sorts of variations of all those things outside of you, but it's the same as like. It's not a lack of resources, it's a lack of resourcefulness, right? What can I do with what I have? And this is what happens when people do have kids, you know? that They, they get a point where like, fuck, my life's changed, I just have to adapt. Now that's where the growth is, that's where people truly start to step into themselves and, and, and really show them, like, fuck, what the hell was I doing with my time beforehand, right? And so... The beauty of this for all of us is to start to see, you know, and if, if development for self is what you're interested in, and my guess is that if you listen to this podcast, then that, that is what you're interested in, then pay attention to whether you're, you're, you're more on the objective side or the subjective side, right? And your potential will most likely lay in your weakness, because because broadening that, right? Someone who's high in meaning, subjectivity, and chaos, and art, and creativity can never get anything out to the world, can never show the world, can never move it forward, can never get their screenplay out, can never do any of that stuff if they aren't able to move into performance, move into doing, right? It's the same for books. It's the same for movies. It's the same for music. It's the thing about it. That's why it's called a performance, hey? <laughs> the thing about it, like is we I highly encourage you to be really really careful with the idea of going it's just who I am or it's just how I am it's like no it's how you've chosen to be over time because we can choose to be whoever the fuck we, we choose to be in any given moment it's just that we choose to bring the past with us because it's all we know at, the, at that stage in our life and if you're high in order, then then often you'll lean into that. If you're high in chaos, then maybe you're more likely to, you know, to book a ticket and go overseas. But that doesn't mean that's the right thing. A lot of the time, people are just doing that actually because they don't want to move into performance. They don't want to move into, into you know, objectivity and order. They don't want to be trapped, not realizing that they're trapped because they never feel like they're anywhere. They always feel like they have to be somewhere new. Could you, could you imagine that trap? I have to always be somewhere different. And that's a trap in the same way always staying at home is a trap. And on that note, I'm out, team. Thank you very much for tuning in. 
If you found this podcast beneficial, it would mean the world to me if you pass on to someone else that you think would also find it beneficial. Uh, if you haven't already, then check out Move Prep Online. It's on Facebook. Search it. It's a free group. Um, a lot more happening in that this year, including live um, monthly live calls uh, on a webinar and all sorts of stuff. So um, jump on that. Now, I did mention before we have on the 9th and 10th of March, the Mood Prep Weekender. Keep an eye this week in the Facebook group and also um, on my social medias, and I'll be sharing details about that. Otherwise, that's it. I'm out. Until next time, peace and pizza. Kick today in the dick. Slay the dragon. I'll see you soon. <laughs>